Hey everybody, it's Showbach again, back with another Cogmine video, this time Beta 3. I have not streamed a Cogmine video in a while, or recorded a YouTube video of one, but I figured with the recent Steam release of Cogmine, we're going to have a, an influx of new players that uh, could use a hand with getting started. So this, this run is actually going to be sort of a tutorial run or a getting started run. Or kind of walk through my thinking and my process a little bit more than I usually do. Um, I'm going to play in tiles mode, uh, which you can see here. Normally I play in ASCII mode, but most new players um, will play in tiles, so I'll, I'll do that for this tutorial. One thing you'll notice is that my tiles might be a little bit differently colored than yours, and I do this through a configuration setting that keeps the coloring of items in line with the ASCII colorings. Uh, I think default by default, it's they're colored by their rating, somewhere in that. Uh, so that's if, you, if your color differs than mine, uh, th th that's why. Uh, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. Uh, I'm moving around with the number pad. Um, and I usually start off with treads. You could start off with legs as well. Um, the support on treads is a little bit better. Now, something that you can note here, I'm going to switch to mouse, I'm sorry, the mouse mode. Up here in the corner is you'll see that the speed I'm moving at is 160 and I'm treading. Sort of the unit of, uh, of time is, uh, is about 100, is, is sort of the baseline unit of, of time. Uh, and you're, I'm moving a little bit slower, you can see here, is I'm moving at 160. Legs will move at 120, and uh, the wheels you generally want to stay away from. They may have changed it since I've last played, but uh, previously they were just kind of a, sort of a last-ditch effort. Usually you don't want to be running around on wheels. Then you have hover, which is a little bit faster, and then finally flight, which is the fastest. Now, the, the other side of the coin is that, you know, you're gaining speed, you're losing support. Now, what is support? If you look here, right now, up here, you can see that I have a, a mass of 4 of 40. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the, the sum of the parts that I'm carrying comes out to a total weight of 4. And I have a maximum carry capacity of 40. One thing to note is that your propulsion does not add to your weight. It actually doesn't carry any mass. Uh, so if I hit Shift and B here, you can see that the mass rating is not available. And that's because propulsion doesn't have a mass rating. So my two EM pulse guns should be two apiece. And you can see that that's two. And uh, that other guy is also two. And I'm hitting Shift and the letter number to pull up the details on a particular item that I'm looking at and S for stats, status, okay? And they have all sorts of stuff here that we'll get into as we kind of get through the run. So anyways, I'd like to start off with uh, light treads just because I can carry more. I can stack up on the large storage units. And um, it, it really doesn't make that much of a difference in the early game. The one thing about legs is they're a lot more common than treads in, in the... Uh, in the complex. I wouldn't say a lot more common. They are more common though. Treads generally will fall off your defender class robots. This guy won't get out of my way, so I'm going to step on the stairs and off we go. If you don't know that there are 10 levels, minus the one that we just kind of started in, that doesn't really count. So there's 10 levels and we're trying to make it upwards in the complex. We're going from negative 10, negative 9, all the way up to zero, which is the surface. And that's our goal, is we're trying to escape uh, from this complex. And uh, there are side branches, which I'll talk a little bit more, I think, about later as we get into the, to the game. But uh, right now, I want to call your attention to this guy over here. He's a, a what's it called, a watcher or a scout. Okay. And the sole purpose of these guys is they don't attack you whatsoever. They basically will alert their allies if they see you and see now he's he sees me and if there's anybody in the area in the next turn or two he's going to alert them and they'll come running so what i'm going to do is i'm actually take a shot at him and this is a reasonably decent policy to do when you're dealing with watchers 
and they kind of see you but haven't alerted anybody yet, is you can take a shot at them and they'll start running away so that they won't actually alert anybody. So I'm gonna let him go. This is a grenade launcher. This is a or an explosive weapon and they're very valuable. So I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna walk over it and hit G for get. And you can see that it shows up in my inventory over in the bottom right hand corner. Now you can see that this capacity here, I'm at two of four, which means that I can carry up to four items and I currently have two, okay? You can increase this capacity by attaching storage units. And storage units are utilities that we're gonna find here shortly, I believe, at least hopefully, that will increase our carrying capacity. Okay, these guys, uh, green robots are generally not a threat to us, okay? They can be of some interest to us at some point, and I'll get into that more later, but for now, you can suffice it to say that the green robots just, you can kind of safely ignore them. So again, that watcher has showed up, and this time he sends a distress signal that alerts a nearby ally. So that means that, as you can see, the troopers are coming. So I'm gonna sort of retreat to a more defensive pos position and allow them to come through this door so I can fight them one at a time. Now I'm hitting F to fire, and I can move wherever I want to go to, to fire, or I can hit Tab to cycle through visible enemies. So I'm going to tab to them and hit F to fire again, and you can see all the sort of, on the left-hand side there, it's your, your hitting and your combat log. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I kill them, and now I've got more guys. And you can see that I'm taking damage to my weapons here on the side. And you'll go from uh, green to yellow to orange to red to gone. Okay. So I'm just going to keep on going. One of these guys, this watcher has come in, and I'm just going to take a shot at him and go. And you can see these guys drop legs. So, And they also dropped a power core. But legs are generally what you're going to find dropping from these guys. Now, over here, there's a light armor plating. I'm going to hit A to actually apply that directly to my cogmine straight from the ground. And armor is essentially basically to soak damage. And you can see I, up here in the, at the top, we have a core figure. The core is your hit points. If it goes to zero, you're dead. And you can see that we have a 14% exposure, which means there's a 14% chance that we get shot, we're gonna take core damage. Now what happens if we don't take core damage? Well, that's where our parts are gonna take the damage for us. And if you look at our, I'm going to hit Shift D for our armor plating, you can see that it has a coverage of 22%. So there's a 22% chance that this part is going to get hit at this point. Um, and that, that's really the only purpose of armor plating is to actually soak damage from other, so that other parts of our cogmine don't take that damage. All right. So there's this watcher over here again. So finally, I was able to shoot him. And I have a couple of spare guns here. I'm going to pick up a particle gun. And I just step on it and press G for get. We have a sensor array, which are very valuable, but I don't need one at this point. Um, and these early level sensor arrays are not that valuable. I can hit X to bring up a cursor. And I can hover over an item and hit D for display. And you'll see that uh, it will bring up the information for the item that is on the ground. And you can see that this will enable robot scanning up to a distance of eight. Now, what that does is actually allow us to see robots through walls and things. And they will appear as question marks unless we pair it with a signal interpreter, which, as luck would have it, dropped right here. Signal interpreters are quite valuable. And I'm actually going to attach this right now because in addition to using a pairing a signal interpreter with a sensor array, which will allow you to actually see what types of robots there are instead of just question marks, it will also allow us to find out where stairs lead to when I stand next to them. If you stand next to a stair and you don't have a signal interpreter on you, it will appear as three question marks, whereas you don't know where it's going. If I stand next to a stairway with the signal interpreter on, it will actually show me where that stairway, will tell me where that stairway leads to. And you might also notice that it has a sort of a semicolon next to the letter there. And that means that it is a processor. And I'm gonna hit Shift E to display it. Now, processors 
are once attached can't be detached. So that means if I try to detach it, it will destroy itself. And I'm going to hit Shift E to attempt to detach. I'm sorry, Control E. Uh, what is it? Maybe it's Alt E. Okay, Alt E to to try to take it off, and it will warn me that if you take it off, it's going to destroy it. Um, so you get you have to do it again in order to remove a processor. If I wanted to take off a particular weapon or anything that's not auto-destruct, it'll take it off automatically. For example, if I hit Alt-B, it will take off the treads immediately. And since I don't have space for it, it drops it on the ground. So right underneath me, I'm just going to hit A to put it right back on. Okay. Now, anytime you attach a part, it takes 10 matter. Okay. Matter is up here in the corner, again listed with core. Matter is used to attach parts. Uh, 10 matter per attached part and it's also used to fire uh, weapons particularly explosive and kinetic weapons and I don't actually have any kinetic weapons at this time but I'll hit uh, shift 2 to bring up the information on the grenade launcher and you can see here that it takes 10 matter per shot to shoot my grenade launcher energy on the other hand is used to primarily fire energy weapons and electromagnetic weapons and as it happens I actually have two electromagnetic weapons attached so I'll hit shift F to display them and you can see that this doesn't take any matter but it takes eight energy and energy is actually created by our power sources everything is sort of it's sort of this ecosystem of parts everything kind of works together to you know enable your cog mind to do things so that's sort of a high level, and I'll get more into it later as, as time warrants. But anyways, continuing on. Uh, this is a terminal, and if I just run into it, uh, it, it presents us with a list of things that we can do to it, okay? We can uh, run uh, a rec rec all these targets here, A through B, C, D, E, F, G, and uh, finally Z allow us to do different things. And these will be different depending on the terminal that you go to, okay? For example, I can hit E for alert level, which currently tells us we're at low security. It had an 80% success rate. Now, if you notice that it says alert check there, that's actually the command that gets executed when you hit that key. And you can actually use an alert, or uh, the manual command, and run any command that you see here uh, on any terminal. So for example, if I start typing alert, it already has alert check there. So I could do this on any terminal if I wanted to do it by hand. The advantage of doing them with the letters here, if that shows up on the terminal itself, is it actually has a little bit higher success rate of, uh, of actually happening. So that's why you would want to try and, and look at the list of, of commands that you can execute on the terminal itself before using a manual command. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ex execute a schematic for a signal interpreter, which will give us the actual uh, a schematic for the signal interpreter that we saw earlier that we can use to actually build the signal interpreter at a fabi carrier if we find one at, at a later point in the game. This time I failed, and you can see that there's an estimated trace progress being initiated against us, and it's currently at 24%. If it hits 100%, the terminal will lock and they'll dispatch an investigation squad against this terminal. So you don't want to go up to 100% if at all possible, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it another shot. And I failed. Now we're 89%. So I'm just going to hit, I'm going to get out of here by hitting escape. I don't want to push my luck, okay? On we go. This is a repair station. These are used to repair items that um, are damaged. So for example, I have this particle gun in my inventory, and I can scan it by hitting A, scan component. We'll scan uh, the one that's in my inventory for D. And it says that it's ready to repair it, so I have a 64% chance to repair this particle gun. It will take 32 turns. So I'll go ahead and do it, try it again. Now it's repairing the particle gun. So you'll see that there's a counter that will appear, and we can just hit five to bypass the time and it's repaired it and spit it out right in front of us. We can pick it up and continue on our way. I generally don't find a lot of use for repair terminals. Uh, they come in handy every now and again, but uh, 
I generally tend to, to leave them to the wayside. You, know, you just replace your parts with uh, stuff that you find throughout the complex. Okay, another terminal here. Mm, so we'll go walk in and we'll, we'll jack in. Okay, okay. down here in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll notice that there's a pest. And I'm going to hit X to move over into cursor mode and move over to him and hit D for display. And you can see that he is flying and very fast. His movement is 37. We're 160. So he can take a lot more actions than we can uh, because he's moving such more, so much faster than we are. So he only takes 37 units of time to do something particularly moving um, while we take 160 to move. So you'll notice if I actually take a step here, first we'll take care of this terminal, we'll jack into here and, and take a look at what it has. Uh, a lot of the, this is a level two terminal, which means that the hacks are a little bit more difficult for us to, to get done. So I'm gonna go back and hit F for level access points. We jump straight away to 62%. I'm gonna call it quits and get out of here. Now this guy is probably gonna see me at some point and there we go now there's a whole pack of them that's one thing about swarmers that is they tend to to move in packs um, you'll see that they have a particular weakness and that is to explosive weaponry which is why we're we're in luck that we have the grenade launcher so I'm gonna actually hit slash to enter swap mode this will allow me to swap weapons or swap parts in general so I'll hit slash to enter in swap mode, and I'll hit F for my EM pulse gun, and it'll pull up a little menu, a flyout menu, that says where I can swap in there. Grenade launcher is one of those options. I'm going to put it on, okay? Now I'm going to hit control G to shut off my pulse gun, because I don't want to fire that with my grenade launcher. And so now you can see that only my grenade launcher is active. So I'm going to hit F to fire, and I get a little bit of a sort of a flyout of... How much explosive damage is going to occur? It, it's, uh, it does most damage towards the center and sort of uh, levels off as you get it towards the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and fire over this way against these guys. And uh, maybe this will take them all out in one shot. Uh, and I will hit F. To fire. As you can see, everybody's gone. Now, one thing you'll notice that I do, and most uh, experienced players do, is that they do not leave their launchers equipped. And there's a few reasons for this. Number one and foremost, probably the most important reason, is that they're too valuable to lose. Launchers are needed to deal with big groups of guys, and it's particularly the swarmers, as you saw. And uh, so we generally don't leave them on. We take them off so that they don't absorb damage. So I'm going back into swap mode, taking my grenade launcher, and swapping back out for that particle cannon, turning back my other one that I took off there. Okay, I'm gonna walk over here. Check out what they dropped, a bunch of junk, and just move on. Um, I'm going to hit F for fire mode, and I'm going to go over here and try and scare off this watcher. He's not that scared of me. Let's peek in here. Okay, this is an assault rifle, which is a kinetic weapon. So I'm going to actually hit Alt F to drop my pulse gun, and I'm going to hit A to attach directly this light assault rifle. Okay, and we're going to keep continuing on. You'll notice that as you play, you'll find out that different robots have different vulnerabilities to different types of weaponry. So it can be advantageous to sort of mix and match or keep a, you know, a variable set of, of weaponry out upon you, depending on how, what build you're going for. Again, jacking in. Uh, I'll try for a zone layout. No, nothing. So... I'm just going to go on here. But the terminal is not really that important on your early levels. But sometimes you get these guys that like to block you in and just give them a shot and then get out of the way. Okay. All right, another group of pests. So once again, we're going to repeat the process. Slash for slot mode. Take out the pulse gun. Get the launcher. Shut off the assault rifle. Launcher. This is maybe take two or three shots. Okay. So again, take it off, back on, and away we go. Okay, you'll notice that you sort of have these little flashing sections of, of 
floor here and that means that it's unstable and if you step on it there's a slight chance that you might be caved in on which rubble will fall and hit your cog mine and generally cause you to take a lot of damage so try to avoid um, moving in gigantic swaths of these things now stepping on one square of it is is usually pretty safe but you know if you're trying to traverse through multiple tiles where it's sort of unstable is not recommended because it can really ruin your day all right nothing in there still trying to find a stairway just moving around again with the number pad oh, there's a spare tread i'm gonna pick that up if i can get all of it i'm gonna hit alt one to dump this extra core and hit g to get it so now i have that in my inventory I'm going to come up here and take a peek in here if there's anything good. It's a terminal. I'm just going to ignore it for now. There's really not a lot of point to be using those things in the early uh, levels here. Okay, there's a stairway. Hammer and targeting computer. Okay, hammers are melee weapons. They're impact weapons, which means that when you equip them... Um, you can actually run into robots and it will hit them with these weapons. And you can only have one melee weapon active at a time, so you can't equip multiple melee weapons, at least not initially. Um, if you have two of them active, you need to sort of, if you have two of them attached, you have to choose which one that you want to use. Now, one of the more effective uses of a melee weapon is to actually break through walls, okay? So if I were to, I don't know if these have the power to break through walls, these light guys. Let's try. Let's grab one. And now I have a hammer, and I'm just going to hit F to fire. And again, fire at the wall, shutting off my uh, assault rifle. And these are kind of weak. But later, eventually I get through. But later in the game, you're going to find weapons that you can walk through. You can break through walls in one, one swing. And they're particularly useful if you're trying to evade uh cog or combat robots and they're generally used when you're doing a stealth build which i may get into a little bit more later on but a stealth build is essentially a build where you tr you're trying to avoid combat as opposed to engage you can see here that i now have i know that this is materials because of my signal interpreter i step next to it and it shows me exactly where it goes i can again hit Four, and it will bring up the flyout of all stairs that are in my visible range. Uh, so that's the next level. Materials, we're on minus 10. We're going to go and step on the stairs, and we're going to go to minus 9. Every time you ascend vertically in the complex, that is, if, uh, since I'm going from minus 10 to minus 9, I get presented with an evolution, and I can choose uh, two of these in any mix and fashion I feel like. I'm going to start off with an extra propulsion and utility. And so I'm going to confirm that. And you'll see now that I actually have an extra slot here. Propulsion and utility. And another thing to note is that my core is being reset. Okay, You gain a little bit of core every time that you go up a level in the complex and your health is completely restored. Your core integrity is completely restored. So if I, if I had one of you know 400 core integrity and I stepped on a stairway, the next I go up to the next level, I would be completely restored. Now, one thing to note is that if you go into a branch, which is sort of a lateral movement in the complex, you're not actually going upward in the complex, your core integrity is not reset. And that is very important a very important mechanic to recognize. Okay, so this was rather unlucky. This guy is an operator. Uh, and his sole job is to do is to... Each operator is assigned a terminal somewhere. It's usually very close by, this operator. And if he sees you, what he's going to try and do is run back to his terminal... He'll lock it down, and when he does that, you can see that uh, up here, he just uses a terminal to summon reinforcements, which means there are guys en route to our location as we speak. 
Now, once he's locked his terminal, he's absolutely really no threat, but he carries some interesting hardware, which was very difficult to, to kill. We actually got kind of unlucky in that he actually was standing right next to his terminal that when we walk through the door, and that'll happen. Um, in this case, he doesn't have anything that I'm looking for, so I'm going to let it be. I'm just peeking here real quick, and so here, again, swarmers. We're going to repeat the process. Out goes the pulse gun, in goes the launcher, and we are going to um, fire off the old grenade launcher. I'm trying. Okay. Trying to keep that terminal alive. So our grenade launcher took a little bit of damage there, so we're gonna go back to our pulse gun and continue on. Actually, what I should do here is hit control three to attach my spare tread since we uh, we actually gained a propulsion slot. And I don't have a utility at this point that I want to slot in there, so I'm gonna let that be. Uh, what do we have over there? I'm hitting three to bring up this fly out for all the items that are on the floor. And we have a heavy EM pulse gun, which is over there, which is slightly better than what we have. But first, I'm going to have to try and deal with this guy. And I'm going to let him come through. We have a guy that, that is trying to rebuild the walls here. Just hitting half the fire again. Okay, he shot off. Oh, actually, I've been engaging him with my assault rifle shot off the entire time, which is not a very smart thing to do. So I'm going to put that back on, and I'm going to hit Control 2 to put on that particle gun. I'm going to go at him again. All right, destroyed him. Now I'm going to come over here and pick up this heavy EM pulse gun. And we'll hold on to that for the time being. Now, if you're having difficulty trying to figure out which items are better than others, there's a simple, sort of a simple trick that you can look at here. If I hit uh, Shift H to look at the item information for the light assault, you'll see that it has a rating of one. Now all of the items in the game have ratings, and uh, the higher the better. So if you look at the particle gun here, if I hit Shift I, it has a rating of two. So it, it's just sort of a indicator. It's not. I wouldn't say that it's hard and fast, but it's a general indicator of which items are better than, than others. And you can you can kind of flow with that until you get more experience with the game. So into the terminal we go. I'm gonna check the alert level again. Currently low security. I think now is a good time to tell, talk about the alert level for a little bit. The alert level is sort of a hidden uh, mechanic in the game. You don't have access to it directly. You can check it through terminals here. And the lowest it can be is low security. And once it starts climbing, and this happens when you, when you do things in the complex, generally speaking, blowing stuff up, robots and machinery, that alert level will start to climb. And it goes through a number letter sequence. And it'll start off something at like 1A. And then you'll start uh, advancing through the letters until you hit Z. And then you'll roll up to the next number. So it'll be 2A. And you go, you know, through those, uh, like 2Z or 2P or something like that. And it'll climb up until I think 5 is the highest alert level. And then you hit high security, which is just like, I've never, I don't think I've ever hit high security, to be perfectly honest with you. I may have. But at that point, when you hit 5, I mean, they're really throwing stuff at you. So you better know what you're doing. Try to keep that alert level low if you can. And there's ways to, to manage that alert level. Primarily, it's just not blowing things up. It's not engaging everything you see or just blowing shoot at everything that moves. If you do that, you're going to raise that alert level pretty rapidly. Uh, you can also, there's a hack in the game, just like all the hacks here that you see on, the, on the ter uh, this terminal, uh, that will allow you to uh, lower the alert level. And I don't see it here, but... I'll call out to it as uh, if we ever find it again. So, And that will lower the alert level a little bit. Again, you can do it manually, and that command is alert purge. And I'll try and execute it, and you can see that it's, uh, it, it's not doing so well. I'm not uh, really set up to hack uh, at the current time. You can get 
again, utilities that you can attach that will uh, increase your hacking ability. So we'll leave this terminal B and continue on our way. Uh, tractor beam. Now, I'll, I'll let you guys sort of discover some of these items on your own. A lot of these items I have no use for. Tractor beam is, is one of those it's at this time. Uh, this is a prototype energy cannon. Now, a prototype weapon can be sort of a really good find. It can be sort of a better version of its standard type, whatever it is. We don't know what it is. The only way to find out is to either attach it or shove it into a scanalyzer, which we haven't seen yet. I'm just going to go ahead and attach it. Now, what's the downside of just attaching these? Well, they can be faulty. And if you attach a faulty prototype, bad things happen. Sometimes they're not that bad. Sometimes they are bad. This one happens to be a genuine prototype. And you can see that it's an advanced beam cannon, which is better than a normal beam cannon. It's, it's, it's quite good. And you see that it's got a rating of two and it's listed as a prototype. I'm gonna leave that on and I'm going to actually swap out our particle gun for our assault rifle again. And the reason I'm doing this is because energy weapons, if I'm gonna hit shift H again to bring up the information for it, they cause heat, okay? And heat is maybe la one of the last mechanics I haven't discussed here. Heat, as it accumulates on your cog mind, and you can see up here, that we have, our, this is our dissipation figure. This is our current figure of heat. This is how much we dissipate per turn, 100, 100 units of time. Uh, and this is how much we dissipate while we're moving. And this is how much we dissipate while we're standing still. The difference is because uh, our propulsion actually generates a little bit of heat. Now, we don't really have anything equipped that dissipates heat right now. That's why we have, this is sort of our innate ability of dissipating heat. And if I have something, for example, I'm gonna hit Shift H again to pull up this beam cannon that generates 60 heat, I'm gonna be generating more that I can get rid of. And what happens when we sort of accumulate this heat, you'll see this sort of temp figure up here go from cool to warm to hot to warning to danger, some something like that. And the higher you go, the more uh, the, 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 the higher the frequency of bad things happening. And when you go in high heat, it's, it's really detrimental because parts will start to shut down for a certain number of turns. Parts can be destroyed randomly, and you really don't want that to happen, particularly if you're in a firefight. For example, if, say, for example, I'm in a firefight and I have two energy weapons going. And I get to the point where I overheat and my power uh, shuts down. My power... Um, my light ion engine shuts down. Now I'm not generating any power, so now I can't fire my weapons anymore. So going overboard on heat is not recommended. So that's why I swapped out my particle gun for my light assault rifle. Now I do still have the advanced beam cannon uh, attached, but um, I'll generate some heat from that, but hopefully I'll destroy whatever I'm shooting at before it becomes an issue. Again, nothing uh, too crazy here. Uh, I'm going to actually go for F, which is hauler manifests. Now, you will find out these guys, they're little haulers. They're like little pin loot pinatas, and they, they sort of roll around the complex on various levels. And if you destroy them, they drop some really decent stuff. Well, I just executed a hack called hauler manifests, and this tells me what everybody is, is carrying on the level. So I can look at it. And I can decide whether it would be in my interest in going after them and destroying them. Just looking here, I don't really see anything that I'm particularly interested in at this time. So I think I'll leave them alone. But that's an interesting hack. Now I'm going to try and keep this, this run as spoiler-free as I possibly can. I don't want to get too much into it. Uh, but... And so I'm not playing how I would normally play. There are other hacks that I would be normally executing, manual hacks, on these terminals. But I want to I want to let you be able to discover those on your own. You can discover everything that I'm I'm telling you in this in this run throughout the game. 
if you want to watch maybe another run that I'll do and record at some point, you know, it's spoilers. I'm just playing the game and we'll go ahead and watch that. But I'm going to try and leave this run sort of, you know, I'm going to leave all that stuff out. So don't look at this as the optimal way to play Cogmind as opposed to just, you know, getting your feet wet and getting in and, and having some success. Okay, so we, we see some shock traps here. These are traps. You have sort of a little bit of a, a chance to, to see these. Uh, as you're walking through the complex, sometimes you don't see them and you step on them. Now, what happens with these things is, of course, when they're, when you see something laying in sort of a small hallway like this, you can almost guarantee that they're all the way across here. So I'm going to just sit here and hit five to pass, and you can see that, yeah, that, that, that way is pretty much shut down for me unless I want to walk on one of those traps. So this guy over here, I, I believe he's a, so he's a merc, so he's a grunt, and he sees me, and uh, he's just coming at me here. I think that's a uh, transport. Yes, those are one of those little loot guys I was talking to you about. You blow them up, and they, they drop all sorts of goodies on the ground. So when you see one of those, uh, sometimes they're escorted by some grunts. So he's going to try and make his way to me. He's not, He can't. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually just fire at that guy because everything is uh, sort of locking up in here. And he's going to try and find his way to me. Oh, wow. So the scout, in the meantime, a scout saw us, and he's alerted the neighbors. So we're going to hit a five to sort of pass our turn. And now he's getting out of our way. This is actually a very defensible spot. We're in a tunnel, and only, we only have to fight one guy at a time. So I'm just going to sit here and wait for these guys. So they're going to try and encircle me. I'm just going to keep teeing off on these guys. Alright. So now we have a, a grunt coming up from behind. And uh, here we go. These guys are recyclers. And their job is to basically go around the complex and pick up stuff that's been, you know, strewn about, particularly during combat. And you're going to love to hate these guys because as soon as you're done with combat, you're going to want to kind of re-equip yourself with the stuff that you've blown off of other robots. And these guys will come along and try and pick it up. So sometimes it's just okay just to blast them away. Okay, so I've lost my armor plating. This is going to be trouble here. These watchers. Okay, so now I'm getting up in the heat. I haven't been paying attention. That our, our heat is way up now. So I'm going to actually go and swap out my beam cannon for my grenade launcher. And now I'm going to try, see if I can get lucky here, and, and start whacking these guys. Now this guy right here is a melee bot, this lead guy. X indeed to display and he's going to basically run up to me and start pounding me he doesn't have any remote so i'm going to go oh, I'm out of matter no i can't be out of matter okay um this is bad news man so he's right up on me so i'm going to back up back up again now i'm going to switch out my grenade launcher and put on that pulse gun. And all right. What do we got here? This is light armor plating. So I'm gonna put that on. A to attach immediately. We have a heat sink here. These are these guys are nice because I'm gonna hit shift G, and you can see at the bottom of the effect is that it dissipates 10 heat per turn. So now if we look up here at our top, we have minus 30 heat, minus 45 if we're standing still. So this is good. Now I'm going to jack into this terminal. And you can see here we have this purge threat, which is on H. And that's one of the ways to lower the alert level. So I'm going to hit it. I'm going to fail. This time I succeeded, and you can see that the alert level was lowered. You, keep, you can keep doing this. Okay, so I think I've twice is, is good enough. So I'm going to hit E for branch access points. And I was successful. So now, you can see that I found storage and the mines. If 
I hit three again or four again, it'll pull up the callouts. Now I'm gonna hit Alt and I can use my keyboard to scroll around. Alt and uh, my directional keys, and I can scroll around. Or if I wanna hit Alt and Shift, I'm sorry, it was it Alt and, boy, what is it, Alt and Shift? One of these, yeah. Alt and Shift, that will uh, make five, uh, a larger increment jump. Okay, so if I just hold on Alt, I'll just kind of scroll through Alt and Shift, make these these bigger jumps, okay? So now I'm gonna hit four, and you can see, now I know where mine's in storage are. And those are both branches, because I did the branch axis branch hack. And you will note that if I end up going into one of these, that my core will not be reset and I will not get an evolution because we're not going vertically in the complex. We're making a branch run, so we're sort of moving laterally. I'm going to hit return to center on my Cogmine again. And away we go. And we got another guy that's coming. Boy, oh boy. Another mercenary, huh? All right, I'm gonna back off. And I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna fire on this guy. Got lucky and killed him. All right. Keep working my way here. This right here is a secret door. Normally these aren't going to be visible to you, but somebody came out of this, so we saw it, and now we know that it's there. Uh, you will you automatically detect these if you walk next to it, so that's a helpful thing. But to my chagrin, we still have not found any sort of um, storage unit, so we're still running at a 4 of 4 capacity. This is not ideal. We want to get that up. Okay, so back into the terminal. Um, you can sort of experiment with some of these on your own. D is, is emer local emergency access. Well, if we're successful, it will show us hidden doors that are adjacent to us. Unlucky again, this watcher. I'm actually not too happy with him, so I'm going to swap our assault rifle, grenade launcher, and he's gonna eat it because I'm a little mad with these watchers right now. <laughs> okay. Grenade launcher off again. Assault rifle back on. I'm gonna hit three to display our items here. We have a light ion engine. Our ion engine, boy, that's a defender. Okay, he's coming to us now. We got lucky there. Um, I'm gonna take his armor. I'm going to hit A, and what happens uh, when I actually have an item of the same type that I'm standing on and it's more damaged, and I hit A to attach it immediately, it will deattach the one that I already have on. So you can see I have a light armor plating that's already on me that's a little bit damaged. I'm going to hit A, and it's going to put this one directly in its place and drop it. So it's, it's kind of a, a quality of life thing. Again, same thing with this treads. These treads are a little bit better in a little bit better condition than the ones that I already have, so I'm gonna just hit A to put it on immediately. Another scout over there. These guys are being a little bit of a pain in the booty. More guys. Alright, off we go with the assault rifle, on with the grenade launcher, and I'm gonna hit control H to shut off the pulse. And you can see this is something that you can you can do is you can hit V and it will show you exactly your firing distance that you can shoot with all the weapons that you have currently enabled. Now if I were to hit H, you can see that it's a little bit farther extends the the uh, the, the range there, but it's not completely red, and that's because my grenade launcher won't reach that that far. So I'm going to disable that you know, pulse gun again. Fortunately, my grenade launcher doesn't actually have to go all the way. It can just go to the point where it can fire. And I can hope that the explosion will help it out. Now, you can see up in the log that the construction progress has impeded dispatching reinforcements. So what happens is, is that these guys are trying to repair the area here. 
and uh, we're fighting it out. And it's, they can't get their job done, so they've basically said, something's bad here, uh, we need help. So now more guys are coming to us. Okay, so I'm gonna hit V to shut off my firing radius, and I'm going to swap out our grenade launcher again for our um, assault rifle and turn back our and our pulse gun. You can see we have a guy coming from the north, so we're gonna come back to a more defensible position, right about here, and wait for him to come to us. Now we're gonna go at him. All right, we got lucky. We're gonna need to find some replacement weaponry at some point here. This ion engine is in better condition than the light one we have, so I'm just gonna hit A to apply, and it dumps the one that I had automatically. So uh, I'm gonna keep exploring the complex here. Now this, I can tell you right now, is it goes to the, uh, the next level of materials, a vertical progression, if you will. And the reason I know that is because we did a branch access hack and it showed us all of the exits for branches on the level. So by the process of elimination, we know that this is not a branch. And if I stand next to it because I have our signal interpreter, it will show us exactly where it goes. And I open this door and we have a defender. Defenders are robots that are stationary and they just hang out until somebody comes and, uh, you know, wants to get in their get in their life so we're gonna get in his life and we're gonna shoot him and kill him and once again defenders are guys ah yes very good guys that carry treads so they're pretty valuable for us to blow up now why did i say oh yes well because we have happened upon some large storage units again i hit x to go into sort of cursor mode and i can move over items and things and large storage units are something that i've been looking for why well I'm going to go ahead and detach our heat sink for the time being by hitting Alt-G and it will drop it to the ground because our carrying capacity is 4.4. .4. I'm going to go over here to the large storage unit and as a matter of fact I'm going to go to X to cursor mode, move over to the other one and hit D for display and you can see in the effect that it increases our inventory capacity by 6. So I'm going to hit A to apply and it'll put it in my unused slot. And now we have four of 10 carrying capacity. So I'm gonna go get our heat sink and carry that along with us for the time being. And I'm gonna actually go up here and get this other large storage unit and carry that with us. Now we have some shotguns here, which aren't my favorite type of weapon to be perfectly honest, but they are what we have. So I'm taking them. Again, I'm gonna take this tread and I'm just hitting G to get these. And this is a good weapon. This is an assault rifle. So I'm going to just ditch this heavy EM pulse gun because it's almost destroyed by hitting Alt H and it will put it in my inventory, and then I'm gonna hit Alt-0 to just drop that. Uh, there is a command that will allow you to drop it directly to the ground, but I'm, I can't think of it direct, uh, off the top of my head. All right, so I'm gonna hit A to put that assault rifle on, and this is some more armor, get that. Now we're at max carrying capacity, and I'm actually, this heat sink is in better condition than the one we have. If you look in our inventory, it's kind of all jumbled about. There's parts that are, there's weapons that are, you know, up, there's treads, there's, uh, it's all, it's not grouped in a sort of a logical fashion. So what I'm going to do is hit T, which will sort my inventory by type. Now you can see that everything is sort of grouped together. So now I have my power source at the top, my propulsion, my utilities grouped together, and then my weapons at the bottom. A little bit easier to look at for me anyways. So we're standing on this heat sink and you can see that it's better than our uh, heat sink that we have in our inventory, which is here, this, this number three. So again, I'm going to hit G to get it and it will put it, it will throw the one that I just had um, on the ground. All right, so now that I've found a reasonable supply of stuff, I'm gonna actually go into the mines. We're gonna go into a branch, okay? And so I'm gonna hit four again to show me where these branches are. And we can see that the mines are over here. I'm gonna enter to recenter on myself. And I'm gonna come up this way. Okay. We have run into something called an arc. An arc, you didn't really get to see it before it deployed, but basically an arc is roving, um, sort of a roving container and sort of a, I don't know what you would call it, it bursts open and it has a bunch of guys in it. So, you know, it's sort of like a, I don't know, like a, a minivan that comes loaded up with combat robots. 
Anyways, so we have uh, this guy is a bruiser, so he's a melee robot, so he's going to try and get in our face, and he's probably going to have good success at it. And these are just typical grunts. This is not really a great spot for us. These guys can all fire on us as it stands, so I am going to try and break for this room to our right. And they're going to get some free shots, but as soon as I get in here and pass a turn, we'll be able to fight them one at a time. And this guy is going to take some shots on me, but I blew him up. And he also is treading, so that's good for us. We'll pick up those treads. And now we can fight these guys one at a time. We lost an armor plating, so now I'm going to hit Control 4 on the armor plating that's in our inventory, and we're going to put that directly on. And again, just fire away on these guys. And I'm going to get that tread, sort my inventory by hitting T for type, and continue on. Doke, off we go. That is a light armor plating. I think we may have actually dropped that earlier at some other point. Hmm. I'm gonna leave it. Oh my goodness. These guys are everywhere. Alright, I'm gonna let him come to us. This guy's blocking our movement, so I'm gonna wait, wait. Now we're good. Far away, we took, oh, there's another guy, defender. I'm gonna back up, pass a turn, fire. Okay, I'm gonna hit F4 to pull out my log. And I'm just looking to see what that scavenger picked up. And he picked up those light treads, and I want those. So, next, yeah, he's gonna get away. Okay, this guy is sort of alerted because we've shot at him before, and he's not too happy about that. So he sees us again and says, oh boy, i got to get out of here. All right. Again, we're trying to make it over to the mines. I'm going to take a shot at this guy up here. He's going to run away. Another scout. Let's get out of his vision range. Okay. All right, so I've just stepped on the alarm trap, and that has alerted the robots in the area that I'm here. And they're going to come after me. And so I'm just going to go. I'm not going to worry about these guys. I'm going to go directly into the mines. Okay, so the mines are a branch. And, of course, there's an arc standing right in front of us. So now you get to see what it looks like before it blows up and shoots a bunch of guys out at us. And this is actually a pretty bad spot. To be okay, this is not as bad as I thought because it, it just unleashed some pests. So I'm going to swap out our assault rifle, put in our launcher, and shut off the assault rifle and shoot these guys. Of course, I miss them. And I miss them again. All right, lost some armor. I'm getting that grenade launcher off now. It's too valuable. I'm going to put back on my wep my standard weapons, and then I take care of this last guy. Mano, mano. Okay, so this light assault rifle is better than what we have, because the one we have is almost dead. I'm going to hit A to apply. It will drop the one that we had. And again, same with the engine. Okay, picking up some matter. Now let's take a look to see if we can attach anything. We can attach another storage unit, but I don't necessarily need to at this time. Uh, so we're just going to cruise with an open utility slot for now. Oh, well, we have a heat sink. I'll put that in. So that allows us to put on maybe a better weapon instead of this light assault rifle. So let's put on that particle gun. Another way that you can automatically swap weapons and instead of hitting slash for swap mode is to hit control shift the letter that you want to swap out, in this case I, and then I want to swap in this particle cannon, which or particle gun, which is five. So I'm going to hit five. So Control Shift, hold that down, punch the letter of the the item that you want swapped out. Still holding down Control and Shift, hit whatever you want to swap in. A little bit more complicated than the swap by hitting the slash, but uh, after you play the game a lot, it'll become second nature. So we're just going to kind of uh, flow through here. An event, apparently. Uh, a makeshift hammer hastily lodged in the ceiling suddenly falls to the ground. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to actually hit backspace at this time. 
and you can see that this brings up the map. And so we've gone from negative 10 up to negative 9 materials. And now you can see that we've taken a lateral movement to the mines. So this gives you an idea of when you're going up versus when you're going sideways. Escape to get out. And we're, we're going to continue meandering through. This guy is just building a room here, so have at it, buddy. Same with this guy. Have at it. I'm going to let that guy continue on. Okay, a bunch of dudes. I'm going to run away. And then lead him into this hallway here. Okay, he's here. Okay, put on that tread. Sort inventory by type. I have that tread that's almost gone in my inventory. I'm going to actually swap that back on for maybe this orange one. So slash D, put that on. Just keep it on, and when it gets blown off, then we'll just put one of the other guys back on. Okay, we have an interesting terminal here. So I'm gonna jack in. These are special terminals, these little X's. They generally have something behind them. Uh, you can see we have an orange door here, so I'm gonna jack in and hit A for open door. I have 100% chance. It's sort of a loot chest. And we have a guy here. Uh, so I found this thing, but I have no idea how to use it. And who the hell trapped this place to begin with? I give up. Here, you try. I'm out of here before something happens. Okay, so he's got a trap extractor, and what that does is allow you to extract traps um, from the ground. And I, I have not found a big use for these. If this, you know, traps or maybe there's a play style that can uh, take advantage of them. I just actually stepped on a razor trap, which will knock an item off of you, but that's not that critical sometimes. I have some heavy armor plating here. This is quite nice. Ooh, boy. I think it, it whacked off my, uh, one of my weapons, it would appear. Well, we'll put on this laser. That guy probably just ran off with my weapon. Oh, well. Three to display the items. Mmm, some nice stuff here. Those legs are nice, improved titanium legs, but there's only one of them, not too helpful for us. Uh, but this plating is something I would definitely like to carry. Mmm. So I'm going to dump, again, this, this almost damaged tread by hitting Alt-D, so that's gone. And I'm going to put on that other one that's a little bit more damaged, but uh, that's fine. And then we're going to pick up this armor. Ooh, this is actually a two-slot item. This is the first two-slot item that we've seen. And you can see that it takes utility times two. We don't have two spare utility slots, and we don't have two inventory slots. But I think I might be able to make a little room here if I'm so inclined. Let's dump this light assault rifle. Let's get this. And actually, let's get this engine, too. This is a better engine. So I'll pick that up. All right. Continuing. Ooh, very nice. A derelict log is a, it's some information that will, uh, when we step on it, will be populated into our, uh, our sort of Cogmind's memory. And at this point, this, this particular a derelict log gave us uh, the location of the exit on the level. So I'm going to hit four and then again, scroll around by hitting uh, control or alt shift and just kind of popping around. And you can see it's down there. So, okay, we'll make our way down there. Here's another derelict log. And what do we get here? Uh, materials terminal intel. So when we go onto a level in materials, I don't know which one, uh, we'll, we'll automatically know where, our, where all the terminals are, which is really nice. If you see these derelict logs, definitely get them. They're super useful. These guys over here are robots that happen to be shut down or immobile, disabled. 
I'm going to actually go over here. Well, they're gonna just going to sort of automatically uh, come to life. And they're my buddies now. So they're my allies. And I can see what allies I currently have active. I believe it's F6. Yes, F6 will pull up my allies menu. Now those are the allies that I have. I have a trooper, a mercenary, and another trooper. If I wanted to hit O for order, you'll see that some numbers pop out on the side, and then I can order them individually, or I can order them all at one time. I'll hit one for the trooper, and you can see the commands I can give it. I can tell him to stay, to go to a particular point, to roam around, follow me, all that stuff. And they're all currently on follow. And so we'll leave them there, and they will follow me. So we're going to make our way, try to make our way to that exit down south. There's actually two exits here, so there's another one down there. I don't really see a need to go down there unless I'm looking for more derelict logs. And I found a bunch of storage units here, so that's good. Nothing we need, though. I'm going to step on the scrap pile. A scrap pile is just a sort of a loot box, if you will. You step on it, and a bunch of stuff comes out. In this case, just matter. I'm not going to go down south anymore. I'm just going to go back up and get out on the stairway. Now I'm going to wait. You can see that as I step next to the stairway, the floor around me sort of highlights. And what that means is that any allies that I have that are on that highlighted floor will come up to the next level with me. If they're not there on that highlighted tiles, they will stay behind. So I'm going to wait by hitting, um, um, I believe it's period, a couple of times. Let them come. So they're all on the floor now. Now I'm going to walk onto the stairs and they'll all come up with me. So now we're going up in the complex again, and I'm gonna take, I, I have my choice of, of uh, evolution parameters here. Again, I think I may go with another propulsion. You know what, I think I'm gonna go with a double utility, and the reason behind that is that I'm going to slot in this double slot hard heavy armor plating. I'm gonna hit Control-9, and you can see that it's been been slotted in. And now, if you'll notice, our our intel that we got from the derelict log is pretty obvious, I think. And you can see that we have, we know exactly where all these terminals are on this level, and that's super useful. Um, it may not seem so useful right now, but when you get into later levels and you start hacking these things, they become that uh, hack uh, some information like that is invaluable to your success. So uh, and it also gives you an idea of where the bounds of the level are. So if you look, I'm just kind of scrolling around again with the the Alt and the Shift and my directional uh, buttons. You'll see that where they kind of stop. <laughs> So I'm going to suspect that's somewhere is the corner up there and down here and then again over here. So enter to recenter on myself. So I think that that's a pretty good idea of how to begin with Conic Mind. Uh, the next episode that I do, I may get a little bit more advanced with the techniques. There may be some spoilery stuff in it. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. But uh, hopefully this will give you the tools that you need to sort of get underway and have a little bit of success with Cognite. Uh, I hope this video has been a little bit of use to you, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Bye-bye.